Yeah. Did it, Kirk? You notice that you pointed out they all face you. They all face the operator. I love what you said. They're not hidden back here. He's a grease Nazi, I found out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They call me the block Nazi, here's the grease Nazi. Yeah. Yeah. Every eight hours. But if you're missing the Zerk, if you can't find that Zerk, do you think that Zerk's gonna get greased in eight hours? No. Then what's gonna happen is your pin is gonna wear out. When your pin, when that doesn't get changed in time, then your bushing is gonna wear out, and then you've got a big fill. But something like a grommet like that matters. Like we figure that out with Bobcat. It's like we it's kind of what I liked about the caterpillar is that they just the attention to detail is there. The price is higher, but things like that. <laughs> Are not really happening on a. On a she, said, she said every 50 hours, it's like what light's gonna go out. Oh, on the Bobcat? Yeah. Like I, I buy new Bobcats all the time. The plate over the lights is a good solution, but dirt's gonna get in there and it's gonna be. Definitely better than what they had. Yeah, what do you think, Sam? <laughs> I've never seen this before. I've never seen this before. I've never before. seen these guards before either. Yeah, I do. I mean, they put this guard around there. I mean, it looks like a pretty weak, oh, weak fix for a design flaw. Yeah. Okay, so they've obviously said, hey, we've got a design issue. Yeah. And they want Here's to our solution. And I don't even try to fix the lights anymore. Just forget it. The lights are mounted here, flush mount. Right back here. That they just, just pause. They, they just pop out, and it's like, I can put it back in, but in two hours it's going to be out again, or I can just forget about it. You give up. You just when it comes to the lights. Now, I buy all Bobcat. I absolutely love Bobcat. But you have two Bobcats. Look at this. This is a way better design. You can also put the forestry kit on here, really simple. Just put the mesh on top of the lights. You don't have to deal with it. Also like that it locks again. I'm big into the security of knowing to tamper with my machine on a job site when I leave it on a job site. You open it up. One thing, though, I will say about it is, like, you do have your camera here because the visibility out the back window is just not there. But the camera, the camera's a good, you know, cop out for it. But the fuel filter here is super easy to service. We can drain it into a Dixie cup, then spin it out. Yes, there's going to be some diesel that's going to leak in there, and then the dust is going to stick to the diesel. And it's going to get grimy, but it's somewhat out of the way. The about this track assembly, Perhaps I want to get your opinion on this and see what you think of this track assembly. So. I love how open the track is. So in Florida, we deal with a ton of sand, and it's just like a sandy muck. Like it's, it's like a concrete, I mean, it's a terrible soil. We have clay in Minnesota. Yeah. Everybody's got their unique thing. And uh, I love how open this is, because our bobcat, our metal and our bobcat tracks come up to here. Same kind of tracks we were talking about. Now you see what we were talking about. No, no, clearance. No, no clearance. No clearance. No clearance to clean that out. You're gonna get dirt in there. This right here cakes on, top, on this entire thing. And you can't even spray it out with a pressure washer. That's how hard it gets. Uh huh. It's yeah, ridiculous. especially. And then think of all the stuff you got up inside here. This is all open space. In oh, here. yeah, it'll get up there. And we have a thin layer of mud that just rides and wears these teeth and sprock it out. I love that, that this should be self cleaning. And if it's not, I can just easily kick it and it'll be a weak point. The Bobcat's tough to kick because it's really packed in. Yeah, you've got to actually get a flat nose shovel and scrape it out or a pry bar or something to get in there. And then you're also hitting the teeth on the bottom because these come down right. at the same time when you're trying to, because you don't have a lot of clearance. The only drawback that I see to a track assembly like this is the is ability it? for it to get loose And I know time. on the Bobcat, we take a piece off, it's pretty much located here, and we pump a grease fitting and it tightens a piston that tightens the track. Construction track assembly, meaning that it's one piece. It's very heavy duty. It's meant for like serious job sites. I want the multi-terrain loader. It's a little bit more expensive and we do landscape supplies. Right. And so I'm on all types of people's lawns all day long delivering sod pallets and mulch pallets. And the neat and thing- you're jumping curves. Constantly jumping curves. Constantly jumping curves. Sometimes tree logs on a tree project or whatever, but the there'll, there'll be springs on a multi-terrain and it'll come up and all of these ones come up, so it basically just snake over a an obstacle. Like Probably a curve. saves a few shovels too. Saves some concrete too. Yeah. You know, um, I I just I like that for jumping the curves, uh, but it is a more expensive option. It probably won't last. So remember, when you're shopping for a skid loader, look at your track assembly and see what kind it's going to fit your needs.